This tutorial is the first of a three-part series in which we're going to learn how to create a convincing belt drive. On the screen we have a drive wheel, a large wheel and the belt itself which I've given a basic texture. In this part of the series I'm going to discuss how the three components were actually modelled because there are some essential techniques that you'll need to understand if everything is to synchronise when we get to final animation. We'll start with the wheels. These started life as cylinder objects, which I've sculpted and then placed into hypernerbs for smoothing. And I'm sure you'll agree the results are very pleasing on the eye. The only issue with hypernerbs, if we just zoom a little closer on the wheel here, is that the object being smoothed always has its diameter reduced. And that's important because obviously the circumferential length of the wheels is going to play a major part in making everything happen here. In order to check my circumferential length, I've created a couple of circles and I've placed these around the wheel objects. So I'll just turn them on and change my view. And you can see the circles here. Now at the moment they're just slightly larger to emphasise the fact that they're there. I'll just zoom in on the drive wheel here, get that nice and big. And then we can see how we can use these circles to get an accurate reading with regard to the actual diameter of the wheels. We'll select the circle around the drive wheel. And if we look at the radius down here, it's 25 meters, which is exactly the same as the radius of our cylinder object before it's smoothed. So if we turn off the NURBS object here, the points of the cylinder are actually making contact with the circle. And it's these areas that we lose by smoothing. So if we turn the hypernerves back on, there we are. And now if we reduce our circle's diameter to 24 meters, it's virtually touching the wheel. It's not absolutely on it, but it's more than accurate enough for our needs. So this is absolutely fine. We can now say that our drive wheel has a radius of 24 meters or a diameter of 48 meters when we come to calculate our circumferential length. I also know, because I've previously worked it out, that the large wheel has a diameter of 96 metres, which has been reduced from 100 metres. So that's the method I use for checking the diameter of my wheels once I've placed them in hypernerbs objects. Yes, I could have been more exacting, but I know that the values I've returned will be perfectly adequate for calculating an accurate circumferential length. So that's the wheels. The next thing we need to look at is the belt itself. This is made from a sweep nerves containing a profile spline swept around what I've termed a belt spline. If we have a look at the actual spline that makes up the profile first, we'll select that there and just have a quick look at it. We'll take the nerves away so that we can see it. This started life as a rectangle and if I just go into point mode here and I've added points and changed some of them to soft interpolated and basically sculpted the spline into the shape I needed it to be. The object axes are placed along the top edge of the spline. I centered them first and then moved them. And always make sure that your z-axis is pointing in the direction that it will be swept along the belt spline. That's essential. Moving on to the belt spline, if we just change our view and show our whole scene. I've created this using the minimum number of points necessary. There's just three around the outer edges of both wheels. You don't need any more than this, it's perfectly adequate. I've also added two further points in the middle of the spline in the upper and lower portions. And I'm not going to explain what these are for at this stage, I'm leaving that until tutorial 3. But rest assured these are going to play a major part in making this belt drive look as realistic as possible when animated. So that covers the point setup for the spline. If we look in the object properties, we can see that the type of spline is a Bezier spline and the intermediate points I've set to uniform. The parameters for the sweep nerves object can be left exactly as they are when you first bring it into the scene. There's no need to alter anything. In order for the belt drive to animate correctly, we need to know with pinpoint accuracy the true length of the actual belt spline because it must be able to be divided by the number of times the drive wheel needs to rotate in order to make it complete one circuit around both wheels. In this particular instance, I'm going to make the drive wheel rotate four times over 90 frames in order to make the belt revolve once around the whole assembly. When the timeline jumps back to zero, there should be no noticeable glitch in the animation. 
So how do we go about finding the true length of our belt spline? Well, this is where Expresso comes to our rescue. So we'll open the editor and drag in our belt spline. Set that up in there. And at the output stage, we'll give it an object port. And then we need to bring in a new node that we haven't seen before. So in our menus, we go to new node, Expresso, general, and it's a spline node that we're going to bring in. We'll have a look at this one as we've not used it before. The spline node starts life with an object and offset port on the left hand side here at the input stage and on the right a position output port and that's all it has at first. We can add other ports, we don't need to add the segment on the left hand side. However on the output stage we've got a number of options and we do need to add a length port. So we'll bring that in there. And then we can connect the output of the belt spline to the object input of the spline node there. And next we'll bring in a result node. And we'll connect the length port from the spline to the input there. And that's returning the length of our spline. Now it's currently saying that we've got a value of 603.185 in there. And the next step is to calculate the true length that the spline should actually be. This is quite simple and no doubt if you're a mathematician you'll know exactly what I'm going to do but if you haven't actually done this before we're going to use the circumferential length of the drive wheel. I said earlier that we've got a diameter of 48 here after the wheel has been smoothed. So if I open the calculator and we multiply 48 by pi we get a value of 150.796. The other remaining values we can't use, they're no good to us. So 150.796 is the circumferential length of our drive wheel object after smoothing by the hypernerbs. And if we multiply that value by 4, we get 603.185 etc, which if we look in the Expresso editor, well in our result note it actually matches, doesn't it? I don't want to get too carried away, but I'm starting to believe I might actually be quite good at this. Anyway, the really important point here is that I need my drive wheel to rotate four times in order to make my belt rotate once, which is why I've multiplied the circumferential length by four in order to return the true length of the belt. To set the belt up with its true length, there is actually a degree of trial and error involved. What I actually did initially was set the wheels 200 meters apart and then I created the belt spline around them. Following this I actually selected, if I just turn this nerves off again, I selected these three points and I kept on moving them until I just about got them where they needed to be. And you can see that the result node has changed there so we'll just move that back to where it should be. And once I'd got them close I came down to the position X here and started fine tuning these values, these thousandths, played around with these until I'd got the correct number appearing in the result node. Once I was happy, I moved the drive wheel into its correct position. So there is a degree of trial and error involved, but it just needs a little patience. Well that completes tutorial number one. I'm not going to go any further here. In tutorial number two, we're going to start looking at principal animation. We'll get both wheels moving at the correct speeds, and we've done that before, it's actually very similar to the gears that we did earlier in the Range Mapper tutorial. And we'll get the belt revolving around the wheels and get that synchronised. So to recap on the Expresso, we've got our belt spline in here, we've given it an object port at the output stage, we've plugged that into a spline node here, and we've output the length of our spline into a result node. For now that wraps things up. I'll see you again in tutorial 2.